The Samsung Galaxy Note 7 was one of the best smartphones Samsung made until it started to blow up. People lost faith in Samsung and they regained it quite a bit with the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. But in just about two months time, Samsung is going to release the Note 8. What can you expect from the phone? Is it going to blow up again? This video is the one to find out. Let's begin by talking about design. The Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus had this revolutionary infinity display and the long 18.5 by 9 aspect ratio and the gap between them and the Note 8 is just around 6 months, which in my personal opinion is not enough time for a company to re-innovate their phone from the ground up. So you can expect the Galaxy Note 8 to look very similar to the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus, so the infinity display the 18.5 by 9 aspect ratio, the 2K panel, and the gorgeous AMOLED screen. But the size might differ just a little bit. From the rumors we're hearing, it's gonna be a 6.3 inch panel, which by comparison to the Galaxy S8 Plus, is not that big. So this might be the first time Samsung is really focusing on other features apart from screen size on the Galaxy Note series. The first major change that we can expect is of course the dual camera setup. So just recently in Shanghai at MWC, Samsung announced their very own dual ISOCELL technology, which more than confirms the dual camera setup on the Galaxy Note 8. I think you're gonna be looking at a dual 12 megapixel sensor both with optical image stabilization for that smooth 4K or whatever resolution video recording. As far as how they're gonna be incorporating the dual camera setup, we're not quite sure. They could be going for an LG-esque wide angle lens or a monochrome lens like on Huawei devices. But in my personal opinion, I think they're gonna be following what the iPhone 7 Plus and the OnePlus 5 have done with the telephoto lens, which means you'll be able to zoom into pictures without losing detail, as well as have this portrait mode built into the phone, which allows you to capture subjects and blur the background to make the subject pop in the picture. And I think that is kind of a good implementation of the dual camera setup, but I do quite like the wide angle lens on the LG G6 as well. Now, in the past, we've been hearing about a vertical camera placement, but more current rumors point to a horizontal one, like on the LG G6, the Huawei phones, the iPhone 7 Plus, the OnePlus 5, all of those phones. And I, I quite like the vertical layout because it kind of gives off a different vibe. But if Samsung thinks the horizontal one will look or will be better to implement, I guess they can stick with that. And from the renders we've seen, it's gonna be centered on the phone, so it won't look as bad or it won't look similar to the iPhone 7 Plus and the OnePlus 5. But the thing you'll notice is that it does have a camera hump. Now, these renders can be changed in the final unit, so most probably there won't be a camera hump, but if there is, I'll be pretty disappointed. But the most disappointing part about all of these rumors is the fact that the fingerprint scanner still remains in the exact same position. Now, while I didn't have a problem with the S8 and S8 Plus's fingerprint scanner placement, many people did. And for those people who were expecting the on-screen fingerprint scanner, they will be disappointed. So. Um, in the ongoing MWC Shanghai, uh, the on-screen fingerprint scanning technology was introduced by Qualcomm as well as Vivo, but unfortunately, it wouldn't be available to OEMs until 2018. And at the current rate we're going, the Galaxy Note 8 is supposed to be announced on the 26th of August, which is around about four months before that sort of technology is available. So maybe we can expect this kind of technology on the Samsung Galaxy S9. Fingers crossed. And before anyone comments, the iPhone might see it before the Galaxy S9. I'm not really sure, but I don't think Apple works with Qualcomm as closely as Samsung does. But apart from that, most of the software and hardware on board the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus will most likely be carried over to the Galaxy Note 8. You can expect the same revamped TouchWiz UI with more of a twist to accommodate the S Pen features, which include things like translating via handwriting, as well as pinning notes to the always on display so you never forget what you're supposed to do during the day. But apart from that, you can always expect the Snapdragon 835 processor, the Adreno 540 GPU, and for the first time in a flagship Samsung device, we can finally expect six gigabytes of RAM on board instead of four. Now, another thing that I was complaining about in the S8 and S8 Plus, and I don't know if you've seen this video, was how 
not optimized the software is. So I would like Samsung to really optimize the experience to give it more of this smooth feel because even with the S8 and S8 Plus, you don't get that real smooth feel you get on other stock phones. And if you really wanna see what I'm talking about, check out the speed test I've made where you will understand what I mean. And another thing I complained about in the past about the S8 and S8 Plus was of course having two variants. I did mention the Snapdragon 835 processor on the Galaxy Note 8, but more than likely that would only be for the USA, with the international variant having the Exynos 8895 processor. If Samsung could streamline both of the processors and just make it one, either the Exynos variant or the Snapdragon one, people would see the same kind of performance all around the world because with these two different chipsets you do get different battery lives and different performance and that could be off-putting for you know a person in the USA buying it with the Snapdragon 835 and getting more performance out of a phone that essentially cost the exact same amount so if Samsung if you're listening do keep that in mind and yeah I mean apart from the dual camera setup the extra two gigabytes of RAM the S Pen the Galaxy Note 8 will more than likely be just a more beefier version of the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. You can expect USB-C, you can expect micro SD card slots, um, a dual SIM variant in certain regions, and you can expect a 3300 milliamp hour battery. That is of course a downgrade from the Galaxy S8 Plus which has a 3,500 milliamp hour battery. But after what happened with the Note 7 and it's starting to blow up, I think Samsung are taking the more conservative approach. And before I finish off, some honorable mentions would be to incorporate a stereo experience, please, to keep the headphone jack because everyone still wants it. Maybe have an IR blaster. I mean, I really loved it on the Huawei P10 Plus. And if Samsung was watching that video, they might have incorporated a IR blaster on the Note 8 and a 4K display. I mean, why not just throw it out there? But one of the major things I wanna talk about before ending is the price. So various rumors have pointed to a thousand euro price tag for the Galaxy Note 8, which is a ridiculous amount of money for a smartphone, um, considerably more than any other smartphone out right now and would probably compete with the likes of the iPhone 8, which has similar pricing rumors as well. So um, if they are gonna charge that much for the smartphone, they better make it the perfect phone and they better get rid of that Bixby button because no one likes Bixby. It does the same thing that Google Now does. So just get rid of it because why keep it and why have an extra hardware button for a software that no one uses? I mean, if you want to make it a customizable, a remappable button, Go ahead, keep it. But if you wanna keep it just for Bixby, don't. And have loads of different color options. I know you had three with the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus, but look at Huawei, they're giving you so many different options. And look at HTC, they're giving you a ton of options as well. Even the iPhone is giving you more color options than the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus lineup. So more colors will definitely be appreciated. But yeah, that's all for what we know about the Galaxy Note 8 and a bit more on what I want from the Galaxy Note 8 because I really like the Note 7 and I'll be picking up the Galaxy Note 8 most certainly if it does impress me. So August 26th is the day to look out for. It might happen a few days before, a few days after, but around about the end of August is when you can expect the Galaxy Note 8. But yeah, that's all for this video. Let me know what you guys think about the Galaxy Note 8 in the comments down below and definitely leave your wish list about the phone as well in the comments because I'd love to take a look at what you guys think um, Samsung might be bringing to the table. But thank you guys for watching. Let me also know what you think about these lights because I don't really know how to set them up and if you have a better idea or ideas to improve my lighting for A-Roll, leave that in the comments as well. That's all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Again, I don't know how many times I've said that. Adios.